Hello everyone. Welcome to AVLSI lecture number 13, part number one. Uh, today we are going to discuss a new topic based on the source follower, or it is also called as a common drain amplifier. So yeah, remember this is an integrated circuit source follower. So for a source follower, input is applied to the gate terminal of a MOSFET and output is sent from the source terminal. So over here, we have just one register in the form of RS and the output is across the uh, source terminal. Uh, at the input side, we have a microphone signal as usual. Uh, it's just uh, for the example case. So normally this is, this will become a AC small signal, AC signal. And uh, V1 is the biasing voltage. So as to bias the MOSFET in the proper operating region, that is for an amplifier, it has to be biased in the saturation region. So MOSFET is biased in saturation and uh, this configuration is called as source follower. Now in the, in the further in the session today, we will justify why it is called as a source follower. Now uh, for our convenience, we won't be drawing a mic signal and a biasing voltage again and again. Instead, we will be just writing V in. So from now on, a source follower circuit will look like this, correct? So your V in, if the moment we write over your V in, it will automatically mean that it's consist of a, a small microphone signal or a AC signal as well as my biasing voltage. Okay. So now from now on, this will be a source follower. There is no drain resistance. Drain terminal is directly connected to VDD. Gate terminal is my V in and output is taken across the source terminal. Fine. So let's proceed forward. Now we have to determine the three things for this amplifier input impedance, output impedance, and the voltage gain. So to estimate the voltage gain, we draw the small signal model of the circuit. So there are some rules in drawing the small signal model of the circuit. So for that, we'll follow them. So the first rule is that the microphone signal will be represented by a small time varying AC voltage source V in, right? Then next is the battery voltage V1 is set to zero because it's a DC voltage and it's independent of time. Uh, VDD is also set to zero for the same reason and will replace the MOS device with its small signal model. Fine, so let's do that. So once we take care of these rules, uh, we have the small signal model over here. As you can see, between the gate and the source, we have open circuit, just VGS. Between the gate, uh, I mean, uh, from the gate terminal to the ground, to the AC ground, we have V in. Between the drain terminal, uh, from the drain terminal, we have just connected to ground directly. Drain terminal is connected to ground. From the source terminal, we have RS register going towards the ground and also the V out is taken. So this becomes my small signal model for a source follower. All these grounds are my AC grounds. Fine. So with this small signal model, let's try to derive the input impedance, output impedance and the voltage gain. So let's start with the first one, the estimation of small signal voltage gain AV. Now remember that uh, we have ignored the body effect and we have also ignored the channel and modulation parameter. So it's a lot of assumptions are used over here. So this is the simplified form. Okay, we are deriving under simplified assumptions. So what is the body effect over here? So as you can see, the source terminal is not connected to ground. Correct. But the body terminal of a MOSFET, of an NMOS transistor, it's connected to ground. That means there will be VSB, right? So these derivations are the very crude form derivations. They are just give you the, you know, uh, insight, uh, overall insight of the feel of the small voltage gain, input impedance and output impedance, but they are not exact. Okay. They are approximated formulas. Now let's proceed ahead. Uh, remember again, we are estimating the small signal voltage gain under lambda equal to zero, and we are ignoring the body effect, fine? So this was the small signal model we have already seen before, right? So if you see over here, the voltage V out is in parallel with resistance RS, fine? So what will be the current flowing to resistance RS? V out upon RS. So with this information, let us begin. So first we applied a KVL to the gate source loop of circuit shown in figure number 13.1. So what do we get? V in, we apply KVL to the gate source loop. So we get V in 
minus VGS minus V out is equal to zero. So if I want to write VGS in terms of V out, V in and V out, I'll get VGS will be equal to V in minus V out. This becomes equation number 13.1.1. Now next is we will apply a KCL at the source node. So what does the KCL says? KCL says that incoming currents should be equal to outgoing currents. So what are the incoming currents into the source node? GM VGS. And what is the outgoing current? GM, uh, sorry, a V out divided by RS. So GM VGS is equal to V out divided by RS. Now from 13.1.1, we'll substitute the value of VGS. So we get GM into V in minus V out is equal to V out upon RS. Then we merge the terms of V out together and V in together. And uh, finally we get V out upon V in is equal to GM RS divided by one plus GM into RS. So finally the small signal voltage gain for a common drain amplifier or for a source follower is given by RS divided by one upon GM plus RS. Uh, this becomes equation number 13.1.2. And we can verbalize this result in the following form that uh, uh, AV is equal to resistance tied between the source and the ground divided by one upon GM plus resistance tied between the source and the ground. So let's look at the circuit diagram again, the small signal model. So registers register tied between the source and the ground over here is RS. Okay. So that's what the formula says. AV is equal to RS divided by one upon GM plus RS. Now from the above equation, which we, which we have derived AV, the gain voltage gain AV is very, very close to unity, but it's always less than one, right? So as you can see, one upon GM is a very small quantity, but since it is RS divided by RS plus something, your gain AV is always slightly less than one. Fine. So this completes the derivation for the small signal voltage gain. Remember, this is derived under ignoring the body effect and lambda is equal to zero. Now let's look into the input impedance quickly. Okay. So we are estimating the input impedance Z in. Again, considering lambda equal to zero and ignoring the body effect. So what do we do? We, for finding the input impedance, we consider the entire small signal equivalent circuit inside the box. And we apply a test source at the outside to the input terminals Vx and we measure the current Ix. So what will be Z in? Z in will be equal to Vx divided by Ix. Fine. Now, while focusing on Z in, the output of the circuit is not the focus. So remember that. So even if you don't show the output, that's absolutely fine. So we put the entire circuit inside the box, small signal model equivalent circuit, and we apply the test source from the outside Vx and we force the current Ix to it. Now we have to find out what is Vx upon Ix. So if you look carefully, the gate and the source terminal are open circuited. Okay. Because the gate current in a MOSFET is negligible. So what will happen over here? This, your equivalent circuit will reduce to this. So you see over here between the gate and source, it's nothing connected. It's open. So your input impedance looking into the source follower will be infinite at low frequencies. As you can see, since the gate current is very, very small or almost negligible because the gate is made up of oxide layer in a MOSFET, remember? So your input impedance at low frequencies will be infinity for a source follower. Fine. Okay. So again, this is under the assumption that lambda is equal to zero and uh, we are ignoring the body effect. Now let's move on to the next part. That is the output impedance. So we'll estimate the output impedance Z out now again with lambda equal to zero and ignoring the body effect. So again, we consider the entire small signal equivalent circuit inside a box. Uh, with the external test source Vx applied at its output terminal and we measure the current Ix, keeping V in equal to zero, right? So here in this case, V in is a source, voltage source. So we'll short circuit it. That's the requirement for measuring Z out. So for estimating Z out, V in is set to zero, right? So Z out will be Vx upon Ix over here. So we have put the entire small signal circuit inside the box. And uh, we have uh, put our external test source Vx and measured the current Ix and V in is made to zero, correct? Uh, if V in is zero, the gate terminal is connected to ground, right? So what will happen is uh, 
and in the next step what are we doing is we are interchanging rs and vx over here we are interchanging rx and vx in the next step to simplify the analysis so here is the here it is now right now so right now we have vx upon ix interchange with rx rs right so we'll first find zo which will be the ratio of vx upon ix and next we'll find the value of z out which will be rs parallel to z out fine so from this diagram we can say that your vx voltage is equal to minus of vgs so if you look carefully the source terminal we have connected the positive part of vx right and that is connected to the negative part of vgs so that means your vx voltage is equal to minus of vgs now this becomes equation number 13.1.3 and now we apply the kcl at the source node what do we get we get gm vgs is equal to ix okay so from this circuit we can determine that vx is equal to minus of vgs fine now we apply the kcl at the source node so what do we get gm vgs is equal to ix because gm vgs is the incoming current at the source node and ix is the Uh, i mean both are incoming current actually so it should be gm vgs plus ix is equal to 0 so that's what we have written over here and uh, vgs we can substitute minus vx i mean uh, correct so ix will be equal to gm into vx so vx upon ix will be 1 upon gm but that is zo so what will be z out z out will be rs parallel to zo and what is z over here 1 upon gm so the overall output impedance of a source follower it's is given by rs parallel to 1 upon gm i hope it is clear so the output impedance of a source follower is given by rs parallel to 1 upon gm and it's a low value right that's one of the features the output impedance of a source follower is extremely low fine so let's move on to the next point now okay so next point is about why the name source follower okay so we'll clarify this now uh this is my circuit of my source follower uh, we have a transistor m1 and we have input connected to the gate output is taken from the source terminal this is just the qualitative analysis okay we are not deriving anything but qualitatively so let's say v in increases okay now we know that v in writes on the dc value dc bias value because we have a v1 connected right v1 bias voltage connected so your v in ac quantity will ride on the dc quantity so that means if v in increases your gate voltage vg will increase output is connected to the source terminal uh, that is the source voltage or we can call it v out also so there are three options for the output voltage either the output can go up or it can go down or it doesn't change okay so let's assume that the output voltage does not change that means vs is equal to idrs that we know the source voltage is equal to id times rs over here should be constant that means id should be constant uh, so vs doesn't change but what will happen is but your vn is increasing so over here if id is constant vs should not change but as your input is increasing vg is increasing so vgs is given by vg minus vs that means if vs is not changing vg is increasing my vgs will overall increase and if vgs increases id has to increase that means vs changes so this contradicts the fact that the output should remain constant output voltage vs should remain constant that means that your output voltage should go up fine because your id is given by half mu n cox w over l vgs minus vts the whole square so that means as vgs increases your id will increase and if id increases your vs will definitely change so that will contradict that vs remains constant therefore your output should go up when the input is increasing uh this only means that the output voltage going up by the same amount is only conclusion we can draw over here that means as my output increases uh and my output will increase as my input increases and vice versa that means over here we can say that the source voltage is following the voltage at the gate terminal which is the input voltage 
Hence the name of the circuit is source follower. So the source voltage over here is following the changes at the input voltages, and hence the name source follower. I hope it is clear. Okay. So now let's look to the last section of the video. This is about the application of such a circuit. Now we have determined that the voltage gain of a source follower is less than one. Assuming that your lambda is zero and ignored, we have ignored the body effect. But generally, the application will remain same, right? So let's just consider for a fact that is there an application for such a circuit? The answer is yes. So let's consider this scenario. Let's say you have a common source amplifier, right? And let's say you want to connect the output of a common source amplifier to an antenna. Now uh, we know that the antenna impedance is around 50 ohms, but the common source amplifier output impedance is not so low. So what will happen is the output impedance of a common source stage is given by R out equal to approximately equal to R D value, and uh, we have the voltage gain of the common source amplifier minus G M R D. So after we connect the output of the common source amplifier directly to the antenna, what will happen is This R D of the common source amplifier will come in parallel with the output impedance of this antenna. So what will really happen is A V will become right now after connecting connecting it to the low impedance antenna will become A V is equal to minus G M into R D parallel to 50 ohms. So the direct connection to the antenna will pull down the gain drastically. So let's say before connecting the antenna the gain was 100. after connecting the antenna will gain will drop down in single digits right so which will affect adversely so what will what is the solution the solution is to use a source follower uh, i mean a common drain amplifier or a source follower in between the common source stage and the antenna so what will happen is by connecting the source follower source follower will act as a buffer so it will have a, a voltage gain of around 1 and it's having an output impedance very very low so its output impedance can be tuned to the antenna impedance that is 50 ohms and this process is called as impedance matching so once the output impedance of the source follower matches with that impedance of a antenna your signal can be transferred without any loss right so here it is uh, so if the output impedance of source follower is low which can match with the antenna impedance of 50 ohms there will be no loss of signal so over here your source follower circuit is acting as a buffer and it is driving a low impedance antenna in this scenario okay so uh, earlier what was happening if we have to connect the cs amplifier directly to antenna the gain was re getting reduced drastically but now after connecting a source follower it is acting as a buffer and also it's providing a impedance matching at the output with the antenna impedance so there will be no loss of information okay so your source follower is acting as a buffer and also it's capable of driving a low impedance load like an antenna okay so i guess uh, we have covered all the topics of this session uh, right so let me go at the start and explain briefly summarize what we have done so far so we have started with the source follower or called as common drain amplifier we have seen its uh, small signal model right and then we have estimated its voltage gain that is small signal voltage gain av we have estimated its input impedance we have found out to be infinite and then finally we estimated the output impedance which was rs parallel to 1 upon gm then we found out why the name source follower and at the end uh we have provided an application i mean we have just described an application for such a circuit where a source follower can be used okay so i guess that is all for this session next time we will start with the source follower analysis uh with lambda non zero and with considering the body effect so until then have a good day and thank you